right, everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James, and this is one of our conversational shows. I'm joined now with Andrew Fantasia. Andrew, what's up? Hi, James. I am up because I'm awake. I want to do this video. But by the way, uh, if you like this video, if you like whatever we do here, whatever, if you want to stay up to date with all the fun stuff, give us a like and a subscribe, click the bell. Leave a comment, though. I read all the comments, reply to all the comments. If you have a topic you want us to talk about, leave that also in the comments down below or send us an email at digitalcharcuterie at gmail.com. Anyway, today we're going to talk about uh, the Batman. It's coming out. HBO Max is hitting just like Spider-Man before it, though, Andrew. It leaked online full HD uh, uh before before it's released oh well different than spider-man though it only was leaked a week before it's release. spider-man was two weeks forcing the digital release to come up early but it's going to hit hbo max here in canada we're getting it on crave so it's coming out monday we get to watch all the three hour glory i can't wait to sit back and watch this movie but we're not going to talk about the movie yet we're going to we are going to talk about it a lot as you know when it's on hbo max and we have a chance to see it again we're going to talk a lot about it but right now we got to talk a little bit about other criminals and villains that the Batman could be facing, potentially facing, or maybe not even facing. And I want to talk to you, and I know you're a big fan of this guy, the ventriloquist, uh, mm -hmm. Arnold Wesker. And I think it almost they're almost begging us, begging themselves not to use him because of this Penguin show coming to of, of HBO Max, this Penguin show. For me, I you know, we talked a little bit about Harley Quinn. I think the the HBO Max is a great place. And I think, Andrew, the reason why I'm thinking, you know, Harley Quinn and Joker and Ventriloquist is working on HBO Max is because these are comic books and they're serialized. <laughs> and I think that's why it might make the most sense. But for me, I think, you know, it's beg the Penguin show is begging for this character. You need a foe for the Penguin to go up against. Sure, you have Maroney, but why wouldn't you bring in someone like Scarface? to to kind of even the playing field and bring another family into the mix another dynamic in the in the the mob scene that we got so i thought it was brilliant in in the batman but andrew you are a huge fan of the ventriloquist do you want to give us a little bit of a like a viewers a little bit of a lowdown on the character are you like i don't know him that well i'm joking do you want to give a little <laughs> bit of a lowdown and who uh, before we get i want to know who you think should play uh arnold wesker um the, the ventriloquist Oh, I love this dude. Um, I mean, honestly, I want to play him because that would be, a, I would love to play a character like that. He'd be so much fun. Uh, but they're probably going to pay somebody a bit more handsome. Uh, you're not, what, you're also, you're not old enough. You're not old enough yet. Yeah, maybe I'm not old enough. Now, sorry, if this was the Madam Web movie, then you would be right in that age range. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, the Madam Web movie just cast me as 98-year-old Stan Lee. So you're welcome. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So who would play Ventriloquist? Okay. Well, first of all, low down on this guy. Ventriloquist is a, a gangster by the name of Arnold Wesker. He's not really a, a gangster, but he works with gangsters. I think he's their accountant or something. Like the fact of the matter is he is not a violent person. He's like their numbers guy. He's just kind of in the background going over all the money they stole and saying, you made a profit, blah, blah, blah. And the other gangsters step on him and they push him around because he's this like dweeby shy dude who's very quiet and just focusing on his calculator. Um, and then he gets this wooden ventriloquist dummy, which according to some of the lore that I remember reading, this it dummy, a lot. It, does it, it does change a lot. That's the nature of these things. This dummy was carved, uh, the wood he was carved from is from a tree that back in the olden days, Gotham sheriffs would hang criminals from this tree. Uh, so the dummy became haunted, uh, for lack of a better term. And so when this guy gets a hold of the dummy, it, it's not possesses him, but it kind of makes him go crazy. It gives him a kind of split personality thing going on. And we don't know if this is really because it's a haunted wooden dummy or if this guy was just sort of, you know, two bricks short of a load to begin with. But long story short, he calls this dummy Scarface. It looks and talks like a stereotypical 1930s gangster, like it's straight out of one of Al Capone's armies. He's even got a Tommy gun. And he's like, hey, come on, you mooks. Let's get over there and steal all that money from the bank. Yeah. Uh, and he's just super fun. And then for some reason, he's so violent uh, and scary that the gangsters, uh, the human gangsters that were pushing him around are suddenly terrified of him. And now they do whatever the ventriloquist slash Scarface says. I love this dude so much. Um, God, who could play him? He was a heavy set guy in the cartoon. So... If he was still around today, I would say somebody like Philip Seymour Hoffman would be perfect mm. for that, I think. Um, oh, boy. 
it, it's got to be somebody who's a good character actor, somebody who can do both roles. That's why I think it would be so fun to play it. Like, I would just love to play somebody like this. Um, I I don't know offhand. I'll, I'll think of somebody before Think about it, we'll come back to it. Yeah. yeah. See, one of the things, I like the version of the ventriloquist where the tree isn't a factor in it. Although I kind of like the idea that that would still be the tree. But I, I like the, the version where he just is someone with multi-personalities disorder and I, I like the idea that his his he I think there's one version where he grew up and his parents were mobsters or his dad was a mobster and they took him somewhere I can't remember exactly where and then, and then on their way home they got plowed down by a truck or something on the way home and he kind of held he held that in and he's always held this aggression and anger in all his life and then I think he he lapses and kills somebody and then in prison he meets somebody who carves the ventriloquist and he he ends up killing that person and takes it with him. And he blames, he, he kind of lives guilt-free on his crimes because it's Scarface, not himself, that's doing it. I love that. And I think that dynamic, because <clears throat> I think the tree is fun. And we've talked about this before. We do want like a more whimsical Batman to come at some point. But I think the tree doesn't really work in the Matt Reeves universe of anything. But I think the multiple uh, the multiple personality disorder does work in the Matt Reeves universe. And I think you could play a, a off of that very well and he could play could, like Colin Farrell's Penguin would have so much fun with this character because I think he would also kind of see right through like this is a it's a dummy like do you, do you see what you're talking you're talking to a dummy you guys are scared of a dummy but then like you said he's super violent and you can use that violence against the Penguin like, well, not, you wouldn't kill the Penguin is not what I'm saying but you use it now so the Penguin could have fear of this but if this movie is like Scarface, you have to show the penguin going up the ladder. And this is just, this is like someone in the mob working there. And, you know, if you take what I like about him aside and what you said, was it, I think it was the animated series or one of the iterations where he is the accountant for Mar for the Falcone family, which, which would work very well in this one because the Falcone family, obviously Falcone, spoilers, we should, you know, is dead. So now his accountant is you know, well, what what are we doing here? We got issues. We got issues, and that could even cause a problem with with Penguin. And then Maroni might even come out of prison now because you've learned, oh, the rat was him. So now he's he somehow gets out. So there's just like this. You could have this awesome mob fan, like Soprano style TV mm -hmm. show, which I think was one of the things they promised us. And you can have that play out. And you don't have to have the ventriloquist as your main antagonist. He just is there and he's lurking and. Because this character, you know, as much as you love him, and, and I think he's pretty fascinating, I don't think we're ever going to see him on the big screen in this world. You know, maybe another movie, some um, some other point, but I don't think in this one we're going to, he's going to, you know, they use the penguin in what could have been his role. I don't think we're ever going to get there, but you use him in this kind of show. I think, I think it just makes so much sense and he fits. And it makes me like, you, the one thing Matt Reeves did in the movie, Andrew, was he utilized, and people complain, oh, it's the same villains, but he utilized Batman's rogues gallery. He utilized them, and I can't see why he wouldn't utilize them again in a show about the Penguin. Yeah, why not? I mean, if, if this Arkham show is any indication, HBO Max is going to go all out. They're basically just going to have a, a buffet of his rogues gallery and just be like, okay, you're going here, and you're going there. And we'll put Man Bat here. Why not? Like, I feel like they're going to really just surprise us with what they use. I disagree, though. I think the Matt Reeves universe, I think the the haunted tree does work well if you leave it ambiguous. If you just say, you know, carved from a tree that people hang from and then like, I, you don't you don't spell out anything. You're just like, is this guy nuts? Probably. I'll not, double not, down. Not. I'll double down that. I'm doing a video with Rob McDonald. You're, that's going to be up soon. Andrew, we're going to double down. The tree isn't what the officers hung people from the tree is associated with the court of owls and something that they used to do back in the day. That's Ooh, what you, that's where the tree is. So, so yes, you use that, but it doesn't have any soup, any supernatural element to it. That's it. I can get anything that brings them into the fold. I'm on board for that. <laughs> I, I think, I think they are coming, but I think this, I don't know, this show excites me in, in in like I said, Sopranos, Scarface, and Penguin is my favorite villain. So you take them all, add in some ventriloquists, and I just I don't I think if you I don't know what it's gonna look like, but if you if it's in the same world, you've got to think it's gonna have the same it's gonna have similar cinematography and style to the movie. And if that's the case, the ventriloquist is a character that probably like the deep shadows, the dark shadows would suit. A puppet, I think, like to be like yes, uh, to be an antagonist. I think that's what it suits. Yeah, and you know, I imagine 
the people who go into the movie, I mean, it'd be a small number of people. So this isn't really worth something that they would invest a lot of time in, but the small number of people who go into the movie not knowing what this character is all about. And if you build up to the puppet, it's like, oh, like it'll throw some people for a loop. Um, the only, I'm still trying to rack my brain for actors and another one is coming up. I don't know what he looks like now. He might be too old, but I think it was- Jared be, Leto. You have the right first initial. Actually, yeah, you're right. Jared Leto should play him. And then we'll get Chris Pratt to voice the puppet. And Perfect. Yeah, that's, a, I see, I have as much talent as a Hollywood casting director, apparently. Um, Jason Alexander, I think, because he is like a oh classically trained- really cool actor he can do voices he can do kind and gentle he can do scary and mean um i don't know if he's still acting i don't know if he's like how old yeah he is, he's he in like. he's in the most recent season of the marvelous mrs Maisel. and there we go put him in i like that i, I like that a lot. <laughs> Dude, i like your idea though that you, i like i kind of when you were saying how you could lead up to the puppet i kind of like the idea that the penguin hears about this Scarface. He hears about him. He doesn't quite know who it is. Mm -hmm. And then when he meets him, it's like, it's a puppet? Like he can, and then it's like, you know, more than a puppet. I like that. I, I like that idea a lot. I think they can, I think they can have fun, but keep it grounded. I don't, I just think it could work in the multiple personality disorder. You know, you could really play off and really do a really good job with that. Uh, there's so much to explore with that in, in, in this world. But we're going to leave it at that right now. Let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, Andrew, anything else you want to say to the point of the ventriloquist? Because I know you're a huge fan of him. And your second favorite villain, of course, is... Um, I can't think of... Clay, I don't know. Clayface? Sure. Let's just go Clayface. I don't uh, know why is Clayface keeps getting brought up. I don't know what he, it he is. He does. Yeah. He, he's low on the totem pole for me, though. Um, me too, though. I, me too. I don't get yeah. it. <laughs> I like the origin of him, but I feel like every single superhero has some character in his orbit whose power is just, I can look like other people. So that kind of gets boring to me. Um, but I, I think Ventriloquist might be my second favorite Batman villain after Riddler though like he's up there so he's just I want to see them play with him and use him to his full extent I want to see conversations between Arnold and the puppet because that get, he's like threatening himself he's like you stop controlling me I'll put two bullets in your face and it's like whoa this guy is absolutely out of his mind that would be so much fun Bring it. Bring it, Reeves. Bring it. I can see Jason Alexander playing that part. All right, everybody. Oh, Andrew, plug your book. Yes, I wrote this amazing book you guys are going to love. It is called Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I, I, I just I lied. That's not my book. My book is even bigger. See? Look at the Holy size crap. comparison. Look at the size comparison. Whoa, what's this? This kickstarted a whole franchise beloved by over a billion people. Imagine what this will do. Uh, you can buy Side Scroller right now on Amazon. Uh, and if you like ebook, you can get an ebook instead. Buy a copy for every human you know, and it would help me out a lot. And check him out on YouTube at Andrew Fantasia, youtube.com slash Andrew Fantasia, where he, I don't know, talks about succession a lot. I don't. Yes, know it's the I'm, only thing I talk about because it's the only thing people listen to. I, I was kind of surprised that you just had never seen Bad News Bears before. But anyway, we're going to get going right now. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time. It's bad news. It's going to be bad news for the athletics. May you be the master of your own universe. You can say that again. It's my my puppet voice. <laughs>